Hello, my beautiful people, and welcome back to Sailing Zingaro. On last week's episode, we started off in Bonaire, took a stroll down the quiet streets, then set sail back to Curacao so I could fly back to Aruba and meet the new crew. Okay guys, I'm at the airport and uh, turns out that they're sold out for the next week. I was trying to get on standby, but the last two people showed up like two minutes, two minutes to go. They were gonna, they were gonna sell it to me two minutes later. So we made plans to sail to Aruba. We're gonna sail to Aruba in three days. Get ready for some more lagoon footage to be continued. Okay, before we get to the sailing footage, I've got some other footage for you. This is from my birthday party. I don't normally share this kind of stuff, but... I'm gonna go out on a limb here because some of this stuff is hilarious. And you can get it like a feel for the James behind the James, yeah. I'm always like this, this is the thing. I just wanna prove it to you. <laughs> so I have circled the sun one more time and the party was on a friend's boat. They have a YouTube channel as well. They're called Too Short, they're very cool. So without further ado, enjoy the little snippet of my life. <laughs> No, 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 no. So I'm like, I'm a unicorn. It's been like 30 seconds. I just walked here, walked around. <laughs> it's, it's like a bunch of animals got into it. Look at it. Look. What, Dude, what is happening over here? Don't get in the way. Fucking horde of hyenas. Get her! tried to warn you. <laughs> so what I'm not sure is what to do with this footage. I want to make a little clip just for my friends and family and I don't know what music to put to it. I don't really know how to edit it and you know I searched online and I found a great tutorial on Skillshare and it just so happens that Skillshare is the sponsor of this video. So it worked out perfect. See what I did there. If you don't know about Skillshare, it's an online community with literally thousands of classes for creatives to explore new skills or expand on the ones they have. This particular class is taught by Danden Liu and it's called Document Your Adventures, How to Film and Edit a Travel Montage. Danden goes over everything from how to position the camera, how to deal with light, and even editing in Premiere. It's a cool one. I definitely recommend it if you're new to videography. So whether you like to edit videos, edit music, or paint your own boat, there's a class for you on Skillshare. It's curated specifically for learning, meaning there's no ads so you can stay focused and they're constantly launching new classes. So whatever your passion, you'll find something. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click on the link in the description will get a one month free trial to Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. Now let's get back to the sailing. That's super cool of you to offer to go to Aruba. Dude. I think it's gonna be awesome and totally, totally worth it. I think so. The ride back will be a little crappy, but, uh, Understood, but you can just motor the whole way. Boom, 10 hours back. Yeah. That's what I would do. Don't even try to sail it. Nope. But on the way there, we'll get the rest of the kinks worked out on your boat. Wow, I'm excited. More lagoon. More lagoon sailing, downwind. This is great. Okay. I think this is going to be way better for your daughter, too. So his daughter comes in in two days, and she was going to spend the whole vacation here in Curacao in the marina because uh, they need to finish the refit of their boat. But... I'm saying get out of Curacao, go to Aruba. Your daughter will have a way better time. There's better diving there, yep. uh, better nightlife there. Um, I, uh, I think it's a win-win. The batteries aren't even gonna come in for another week and a half, so. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> We're going sailing! More sailing! What's up, YouTubes? My name is Jans. I'm a mechanic, musician, and round-the-world sailor. Five years ago, I made a choice that would change my life forever. I bought a catamaran, built a hardtop, sailed to Cuba, painted shark's teeth on the front of the cat, lost a rudder, built a rudder in a buddy's shed, lost the second rudder, built the other on a beach, sailed to Easter Island, sank the dinghy, sailed to Pitcairn, sank the dinghy again, sailed to French Polynesia, sank the dinghy one more time, got sponsored by one of the best dinghy companies in the world. 
Just testing it. Ripped the catamaran in half a hundred miles off the coast of Hawaii. Tied it together with ropes. Rode it down Main Street in Lahaina at three o'clock in the morning. Wrote some magazine articles. Started a Kickstarter campaign. Bought a boat I can't rip in half. And now, after nine months getting her ready for the deep blue, I've finally set sail and I'm searching for my next adventure. I really want you guys to meet Angelo and Andrea. They've been very nice to invite me onto this boat for a little shakedown cruise. Let's see what they're all about. So tell me about this boat. You guys have owned this boat for not too long, right? A few no, months? Uh, we concluded the purchase the 13th of March and we've been here on the island since the 9th of April. And now it is the 7th of July. It's the 7th of July. So yeah. what is that? May, June, July, three months. Three months, this. yeah. And you guys are really excited because you are going to be doing? Uh, dive safaris. Dive safaris, I like the sound of that. Mm -hmm. So tell me about some of the things that you've done to the boat. Uh, we put on 2,400 watts of solar. We put on a new bimini over the um, flybridge. We put on a, um, a dive compressor and a compressor fuel station and a dive bank. Um, well, dive bench for up to eight divers. What do you think about the bulkhead issue with that you've seen with um, Parlay and a, a couple other of the 440 and 450 owners? Are you worried? No. Um, to date, there have been no uh, reports of 500s with bulkhead problems. So. We're just gonna um, keep an eye on the situation. If anything happens, we'll get it taken care of, but as of right now, we're not worried about it. Another question I get a lot is, what are the pitfalls of buying a used boat, and buying a charter boat? This is a chartered version of this boat. So uh, what have you learned, Angelo, from your purchase of this boat? I've learned that most charter owners would rather spend a penny than two. There's been a lot of systems on this boat that were just downright neglected and had to be replaced or completely reworked and redone. The engines, the sail drives, the heads, the generator was a piece of crap. The water system needs to be taken care of. It's just, he didn't spend any money on the boat at all taking care of it. If you guys are thinking about getting one of these bigger catamarans, let's see how much this couple spent on just their refit. Today, we have spent $83,000, $85,000. Eighty-three to eighty-five thousand. Yeah. Eighty-three to eighty-five thousand dollars. Yes. Wow. It entails um, a refurb of the engines and. Uh... So the wind noise got a little out of control here, but what Angelo said I feel is important. So I'll go over everything. Now, what this eighty-five thousand dollars entailed was engine refurbishment, new sail drives, rebuilt transmissions, a new twenty kilowatt generator, welding and material for the aluminum bimini and dive station, new bottom paint, Echo Pilot forward-looking sonar, electronics upgrade, a new VHF, new chart plotters, new AIS, all of that, twenty-four hundred watts of solar and twenty-four hundred amp hours of Dakota lithium batteries. That's a ton of lithium. So you decided to go with the three D version of the forward scanning sonar. That was a pretty big investment. If you paid eighty-three thousand for your refit, that was a good chunk of it because that's what, a $13,000 investment? Uh, has that been something that has been beneficial to you? Since the install, it hasn't been of much use because we haven't sailed much since it's been installed, but we're actually um, looking forward to using it in the Bahamas because I would much rather have something on the boat that looks in front of where we're going because the sun's not always positioned correctly for somebody standing on the bows to be able to see what's in front of the boat. Okay, well, I don't know about you guys, but I'm really interested to see what this boat will do. So let's finish the refit and get out of here and get on the shakedown cruise. Hey man, you're standing in water. I know. My sugar scoops are always full of water because that's the way the boat was designed. Um, they wash themselves out when you're underway. When you're standing still, you tend to get a little bit of green stuff growing, but it's not that bad. Take a scrub run to it and you're good. Okay, so that stays open? Um, until I can get this squared away, yeah. Is that a problem? No, it's not a problem. I just need to put a piece of this rubber matting behind here so that it doesn't chafe. And then I can tie this down. And then this won't be flopping around when we're underway. Okay, stop. We need to back up just a second. I highly, highly doubt that Lagoon designed the 500 to have the transoms underwater at all times. Honestly, Angelo, it's probably because you had too much shit on your boat. And before you freak out and say, oh, James, you 
Why are you throwing him under the bus? I'm not pointing this out just for the sake of pointing it out. This is a very common misconception with catamaran owners and it needs to stop. You could have had a big monohull boat and had all the stuff you wanted in the world on that thing. But no, you chose a cat, you need to keep it light. That's the trade-off. The way a catamaran works, when it starts surfing down a wave and goes into the trough of the next wave and hits the trough and buries the bows, you need enough buoyancy in that boat to pop the bows back up before it flips and pitch pulls over. If you overload your cat, it is dangerous. Talk to any cat owner that has more than 20,000 miles and they'll tell you the same thing. It's really only half a joke that catamaran owners cut their toothbrushes in half and throw out all their silverware. I mean, I did that on Zingaro. You have to keep the boat light. Okay, rant over. Back to the story. Now, if you remember when I bought this boat, there was a really old crappy dinghy underneath the boat that was just tired looking and I thought it was trash, but I met my buddy Irvin. He took it, cleaned it up, blew it up, fixed the leaks, and it actually worked for a time. As soon as I got to Bonaire, it just exploded. I spent three days trying to patch it up. I got it to where it was good, and then as soon as I took it sailing again, it exploded again. So when I got to Aruba, I ended up giving it away to a couple kids. You guys met these guys. They're the spear fisherman brothers I'd been having fun with in Aruba. So they actually fixed the dinghy, but I needed a new one. So because Angelo and Andreas decided to sail to Aruba, I had the opportunity to get another one, stick it on the boat, and get free delivery. And I knew just the guy to talk to. What is up, my beautiful people? Do you recognize this good looking guy next to me? This is Irvin. You guys remember him from fixing my dinghy. Well, the dinghy didn't last because it wasn't Irvin's fault, it was the dinghy's fault. It was really my fault because I had him fix it and I didn't realize that the material that these things are made out of is called Hypalon and it was so old that it was just delaminating. I mean, it just basically, bro, that thing just fell apart as yeah. soon as I put it on the boat. So. I told him and he kind of felt bad and I, you know, you don't, you don't have any reason to feel bad. But um, he's going to sell me another dinghy, so let's go see. He's got a couple of them. We're going to go check them out. We make the new tubes for the dinghies and we refurbish them. Um, so the hole is old, but we build new tubes for them. Like that one too. This is here for um, uh, repair. We built this one like three years ago already and that's two years old. And what's the P stand for? It's for Chris. So they call me Prince since I I'm was little and when I started it, I say, hey, I have to put a mark, you know, so I, I put it. So, so it's going. your brand? Yeah, for the troops. We build them brand new and we make them custom out of the flying ones. And is it the same as like if I were to buy an AB one? Is it the same material or it's what? the same material, but uh, we're using the thicker one on this one, like for this particular dinghy. Normally they use 820 from Orca. It's a little bit thinner and I used 828, it's a little bit thicker. They use some bigger boats, but they use them on small boats too. So they last longer and we put rub strikes extra if they people want or extra handles, but they ever, whatever they want to make them more theirs. This is a brand new tube we just built. This is going to go on this one. It's a 12 foot dinghy, 11 feet dinghy. Oh, these are just the tubes? Yeah. Oh, I didn't even know you built them like this. So this is an 11 feet uh, dinghy. So the this hole used to be from AB. It's a lightweight 11 feet. And we are refurbishing the hole now and uh, we're doing the, re the repair job to re reinforcing the sides to make it stronger and I'm going to paint it to make it look nice again and then it's going to go up for sale and for less than a new, pri new boat but it's actually new. And uh, this is going to be the one you're going to take. It's a lightweight one, it's a pretty small but you can take it on board very pretty easy. You can, you can carry this one alone, it's a 8 feet um, from AB aluminium. Oh, so it's very light. We put on this, we put on the folding already on the bottom, so it's uh, less cleaning, and uh, we put a nicer rubber floor on, inside. And the hull is completely painted. It's got new tubes and the slip and everything, and uh, it's ready to go. Check this out, this big girl's doing 13 knots downwind. 13! 13 on a lagoon!
motor fashion, the motor decided to go out two minutes from docking. This is the turbocharger. And that's the cooling line for it. And the cooling line for the tuber charger blue. And all of our cooling for the engine just went that way. So we're down to one engine until we can get this looked at. Oh, it's all down there. Huh? Yep, it's all over the place in here. Filters are full of it. Okay, so. Uh, just shut this one off, leave it off. Yeah, yeah, well, it won't even shut on, turn on now. It, no. won't, it won't even power on. It's probably because it got hot and got stuck. Okay. So now we're docking with one. You guys, you guys get that dinghy tied up to the dock and I'll help you get that uh, motor flushed out. Don't worry, we'll, we'll save it, don't worry. Not a big deal. It's gonna be okay, man, don't freak out. It's, good. it's gonna be fine. We are good, sir. We just gotta take this engine apart now. Okay, so we are finally in the marina. Uh, we are up one dinghy from th this morning when we flipped it. Uh, we are down one scratch to the neighbor's boat, and uh, that's pretty much it. There's... Oh no, no, we're still down an engine. Oh yeah, and we're down an engine. But the guy that helped us get in here with his with his um, boat, he's actually a diesel mechanic, so he's gonna help us out. So, that was your first crisis, man. How you feel? Rung out. Yeah. And that was only a couple hours. That wasn't even a big deal. Imagine like yeah, I know. I mean, we were being right in the middle of the water, right in front of the marina. Lose a turbocharger, all the coolant, engine shuts down. Not so bad. Have problems getting into the slip because of windage. Not so bad. Flipping the dinghy while you're trying to maneuver. Bad. It wasn't our fault. We dealt with it how we could. Yes, you got a little spunky with the dinghy and flipped it, but it's running now. And it's only an hour and a half later, so. That's a big lucky streak. We'll see what happens in two months with your dinghy. That's, what yep. I, that's the problem. But now I have to get my dinghy in the water and get it to my boat and get my generator running on my boat and uh, get everything ready to go there. So yeah, that's what's happening. 